really changes your focus into only doing those things that really affect the bottom line, that really get an impact for you. And you do less of the perfectionism, less of the overthinking things, less of the um, spending hours deciding what colors you're gonna do. Right. Take Back Your Biz Summit, where I'm talking with industry influencers on how they have found more freedom, joy, and growth in their business by taking back what matters to them. I'm your host, Lauren Black, creative strategist and owner of Bosscation, a business retreat in a box to help entrepreneurs like you get away from your daily distractions to strategically plan and grow your business. So I am so excited for the Take Back Your Biz Summit with so many amazing speakers. You can find all of the videos as well as enter in the massive giveaway and see details on our challenge, I know it's a lot, at takebackyourbiz.com. So today we'll be talking with Erin Kelly of Member Vault. So hi, Erin. Hi, this is so exciting. Yay! So Erin, I have been seeing her business just blossom recently. She is the co-founder of Member Vault, which is a content platform where you store all of your content. So ditch the content chaos. So you've got your opt-ins that are in there, your free or paid courses. You can store your one-on-one -on -one client resources and just track the engagement and also gamify things so that you're actually getting results for your clients and making sure that you're able to see who's getting the progress and who's not. So great resource for sure. And Erin is also doing something that is a dream of mine, which she is a digital nomad right now. And so she, her husband, her 16 month old son and their dog are traveling around in an RV. So she's currently in Texas right now. So hi Erin. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, can I hire you to be our spokesperson? Cause that was pretty amazing. I love how you just recapped, uh, nutshelled, everything's awesome. Oh yeah. Well, you've got a great <laughs> business model, so it's easy to show it off. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, the RV thing is such a dream for so many people. It's been really fun to, to talk about that because everyone's like, how'd you do it? Like, what yeah. are you doing? What's it like? Uh, and so that is always a fun thing to talk about for sure. Yeah, and we'll probably get into that a little bit today because Aaron's topic is take back the life that you want, even as it evolves. So I'd love to hear a little bit of why this is important for people. Yeah, so I think that people often um, imagine that they have like this dream life that they're working towards and like once they get close to achieving it or they do achieve it and they start to feel the itch of, or at least I always feel the itch of like, oh, maybe I want to tweak this a little bit, um, that they're stuck in it because they're like, well, this is the thing that I've been working for for so long and like I got it and now I need to just like stick with it. But honestly, I have lived so many dream lives at this point. Like we've lived in a yurt in the mountains of Virginia. We did the homesteading thing. Like we were like out there uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I've lived in New York City, uh, working for Disney corporate. Like, I mean, I've done all of these like dream lives um, and it just always continues to evolve. And so it's like being, being open um, to those new paths that are interesting you. Yeah. Well, I love that. You have such an amazing background and something that, you know, so envious of me who I have travel envy and just love, you know, seeing new places and new experiences. So yeah. what are some ways that people can take back this in their business and, you know, step into that and actually find, as you said, you know, you get scared of evolving, but sometimes you need to in order to embrace the life that you want. Yeah. So I think, you know, at the beginning, before we jumped into this interview, we were talking about how you're jealous of the RV lifestyle and how that you guys aren't actually able to do it yet because your husband's job is, um, in, you know, set for the location. Um, I think that the, the first thing that you have to do is sort of identify what are the things that are going to have to change to make this dream life happen, right? So it, it doesn't happen instantly for anyone. Like for, like I was telling you, my husband and I, like eight years ago, we've sort of started that evolution into having a location independent business lifestyle. Um, and so it has evolved over time. I mean, obviously we weren't doing member ball eight years ago, um, but we really identified, okay, like if we are going to have the life that we want, we can't be, uh, you know, chained to a desk in like Florida or Texas or New York or whatever. And so that really opened the doors for all of the adventures that we've had. Yeah. And how would you say you have personally taken this back? I mean, obviously you're living the RV life now, but kind of what did that process look like? Uh, you know, I've had to take back my 
life a couple of different times um, because business, as you know, can kind of sort of take over <laughs> everything where you're working weekends, you're working nights. Um, and so really recently, one of the things that I had to do is I had evolved into having three different businesses. I was an OBM uh, for a major client. I had my OBM business where I, would, I was training and mentoring other OBMs. And then of course I had member vaults and I was realizing that even though I was working weekends, I was working nights um, while my son was going to sleep, like just like nonstop work. And I was never catching up. In fact, every day I felt like I was falling more and more behind. And so I had to really have that like deep dive decision of even though I have three successful businesses, one of them has to go. Um, and that was not an easy decision for me. Like it was very emotional and I really, really had to, it took probably about a month of just like, okay, my gut knows that I have to cut one of these that I really don't want to and really identifying which one was the one that I needed to cut. So I ended up cutting my OBM mentorship business, which was hard because I actually had people coming in uh, wanting to be mentored and wanting to hire the people that I was mentoring. And so it was like, no, I, I can't do it. So saying no is really hard, but you have to do that if you're going to be taking back your life. How do you think it would have held you back if you had tried to keep doing all three of them? I just wouldn't have had the time to really maximize. I mean, as soon as I really made that decision and started cutting things for that business, uh, my time opened up. I started having more opportunities to open up both from member vaults and the other client. Like it's been, it's just like I said, it's, it's an evolution. So by making that decision, it has opened other doors that have led me closer to the new dream life that I have. Yeah. So what are some kind of, you know, action steps that people can take to step into this, you know, if they are ready to cut out a chunk of their business. Yeah, so you really have to be a cold hard truth time with yourself and look at the things that even if you love doing it or even if it feels like something that you have a lot of emotional attachment to, really look at the, the numbers, look at how much time is it taking you to do this thing? Is it actually paying the bills? Is it something that's scalable? So one of the reasons why I cut my OBM business is it really was one-to-one whereas Member Vault is imminently scalable because it's a SaaS company. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we can have all these users sign up. Oh, well, actually, while we were moving down to Texas, we had a bunch of new users sign up and we already have everything set up to onboard them. So it didn't take any more of my time. So obviously that was a better business to move into if I want to have more time on my hands. Right. And was it bringing in as much income when you kind of left no. your online business manager? <laughs> no. Okay. No. So then that, that's the scary thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important to look at the long-term path and see where you want to be. Like you said, you started eight years ago looking at how to become, you know, the digital nomads that you are today. And so, you know, having that focus will allow you to take the right steps towards that end result. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can't just look at directly yeah. what's in front of you. Yeah, and I absolutely think that fear is often an indicator of the direction that you need to go. So obviously, it was really scary to let go of the successful business that I've been doing for two years that I had people coming to me, I already had a, an existing engaged list for it, you know, I had all of the things. Um, and just realizing that that wasn't the direction that I was going to go anymore, and cutting that um, for something that even though it wasn't making as much money has the ability to, you know, far surpass what I could ever make as an OBM. Yeah. And how did you change kind of emotionally or, you know, mentally when you cut that part out? There was a lot of relief um, after mm -hmm. I made the decision. <laughs> like it was amazing how much weight came off of my shoulders. So I absolutely think if, if for the people that are watching, if you are juggling a bunch of different businesses and you're feeling stressed out and overwhelmed all the time, uh, it's time to really look at, you know, is there something I can cut? Uh, you know, I know we always talk about delegating and just delegate all the things, but sometimes it's actually cutting the things that aren't right. really like moving you forward. Yeah. It's like pruning, it, you know, certain rose bushes and whatnot, that if you don't cut them back, then the next year they're not going to produce as many roses. So you kind of have to cut certain things in order to make room for the ultimate growth. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Absolutely. Yeah. So now in that transition time, when you did cut things out, did you kind of ease out of it or did you just completely cut it cold turkey? 
So uh, once I had made the decision, I stopped taking any new clients. Uh, I stopped advertising. I stopped doing anything on social media around that topic. Um, and I started working with, I had some active uh, mentor clients that I was continuing with that I was had on retainer. Uh, and so I finished out that term with them, but I didn't take on anyone new. And I started uh, referring people that were wanting me to mentor them to the people that I had mentored um, mm -hmm. so that they could, you know, pay it forward. Because I love, I think that one of the hard things when emotionally, when you're letting go of a business or a side of your business is that like, oh, well, what if someone comes to me and needs help? Like, I want to help them because most of us are deliverers, over deliverers, and we want to help people. And so being able to refer them to someone else, pay it forward, not be able to, you know, not just leave them hanging uh, really helps the emotional side of it. Yeah, because then, then it keeps you from that guilt of feeling like you're not serving people yeah. and that you're not leaving people hanging. And then it also is building up the clients that you were pouring into by giving them the opportunity to mentor someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it really did feel good. It was a great situation as I evolved out of my business uh, and really just helped my my mentor clients into nurturing their OBM business. So it ended up being a really great thing, even though it was a very, very emotional and tough decision to make. Yeah. And then once you did make the transition, what did you kind of see you now had time for that you maybe didn't before? Yeah. So I had time for connections. I had time for visibility. And at this point we are now making um, as much as I was making in my OBM business. So it was only a matter of like two months uh, transition, just that open time that I had created allowed our revenue to already match what I was making. So it was definitely the right decision uh, mm -hmm. because it, it, it really, not, it wasn't just time, it was also energy and focus yeah. that I was able to open up. Definitely. And, you know, when you do experience that looking back, it, you know, hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty. So did you have anything prepared for just in case it didn't take off as quickly as you wanted it to? <laughs> Uh, no, it was kind of, you know, it's sink or swim time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe did you have any expenses that you had already kind of cut out because of, you know, you're ending a business. So I'm sure there were certain things that you didn't have to pay for anymore. Yeah, sure. So I was able to like cancel my Canva work for that business and I canceled mm -hmm. my like active campaign for that business. And, um, yeah, you know, all of the, the tech tools that I had, um, for, for my open business, I was able to slowly roll that off. Uh, and so I didn't have those ongoing costs um, for something that I was no longer gaining revenue from. Right. So that's another advantage of when you do cut back and you step into the, you know, just less businesses, then you can save money in that way instead of having to bring on even more clients to pay for the bills to cover all of those items. Yeah, so that, I'm glad that you brought that up because it, this is something I was on another podcast interview and uh, she's been a friend of mine for a while. She was on my old OBM podcast and she was like, so why don't you just keep your podcast like up? And, because I would be paying for lips and hosting and it's not that much per month, but mm -hmm. it's not moving towards my business now. So why yeah. would I continue to pay for that? It would be kind of like a nostalgia thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. so those were kind of the, the emotional decisions like, okay, like I have all this great content, but it's not leading to the stuff that I'm doing anymore. So why would I pay for it? Yeah. I found that I had a blog that I started when I first started my business. I had this separate blog that I wanted to use as I'm a Christian and wanted to use it as growing other business owners who are Christians and helping them. And it wasn't monetized at all. I had no plans of monetizing it. It was just a passion project of mine, but it was taking so much of my time and energy to run the Facebook community for it and to keep up with the blog. And I was paying for hosting in the domain. And so I finally just recently, like I had the, the website and the blog up for maybe, you know, eight months after I had stopped blogging or maybe even more than that, like a year and a half after I'd stopped blogging and I just couldn't let it go. But it was a waste of money that every month I was paying for the hosting and I was paying for the domain. And it just, you know, was something that I knew wasn't growing my business. It wasn't bringing me energy anymore. It wasn't even serving its purpose. So it was time to cut that out and let it go. <laughs> Yeah. And it's not even just about the money. It's like that digital clutter that you're not yeah. doing anything with, but you have it kind of in the back of your head. Like, hey, what am I going to do? Am I going to keep it? Should I post something? Like, what should I do to make, make right. this work? Like, and so it's just always kind of just there in the back pulling energy from you, even if it's not a lot of time or energy um, or even money, it's still draining on you if you're not going to be moving forward with it. Right. Yeah. Because I would feel guilty that, oh, I've just abandoned my community and, you know, maybe I should pop in. So every few months I'd pop in and be like, I'm going to be active in here again. And then I'd get <laughs> busy and I wouldn't have time. And then, you know, four months later, oh, I'm going to be active in here again. Yeah. It just wasn't happening and it wasn't the right path. 
So, yeah. Yeah. So you do have to get ruthless with those decisions, but it really does mm -hmm. open up so much space for the direction that you are going with your yeah. life and business. Yeah. So what has been one thing that you've been really intentional with in your business and how has that impacted you? So I would say when I got pregnant, um, it definitely made me get really intentional with my time. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, when I was pregnant, like it was an energy thing where anyone that has been pregnant knows like you only have so much time during the day where you have like maximum energy and then you get really tired. So I had to get really intentional with what I did every day uh, with like my non-negotiable, like this has to happen today. I always do that first. And that really set me up for a really good place once I had my baby because um, I just, I've gotten so much more efficient and intentional about what I do every day. I don't, I don't do a lot of endless scrolling on Facebook anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do a lot of fluff. And so I think I've gotten crazy, crazy efficient just because I've gotten really intentional about what I put my time into because I don't have endless time anymore. Yeah, well, I found that when I am busy with a project or a lot of projects going on, like back in my design days when I, that was my main business, I would be more productive when I had more projects on my plate and I knew that time was limited and I had to get these projects done. Whereas yep. if, you know, I had unlimited time and not as many projects going on, I would just take my time or be a perfectionist and, you know, keep tweaking things that didn't even make much of a difference in the end or add extra, you know, 10 logos and send 10 different options to a client instead of just, <laughs> you know, building out three and sending those. So. Yeah. Yeah. It helps with that perfectionism thing too, for sure. Where you're like, okay, like I can't be a perfectionist because I don't have time for it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, even with launching Bosscation have realized that there are certain things, you know, my website, I have a design background and I probably could have spent even more time on my website, but I am my branding too. I threw that branding together. It was probably the fastest on record branding I have ever done. Even, you know, starting in college when I would just whip something together before I knew what I was doing. And because I knew I had to move on. There were things that were more important for my time than what my logo looked like. I'm like, this can change later if the business is successful, but in order for the business to be successful, I need to have the business. So I have to mm -hmm. have the, the core foundation built out first. Yeah. And it, it is, it comes back to that, like sink or swim. Like if you put kind of a deadline on yourself and you say, like, I've got to make this work, then it really changes your focus into only doing those things that really affect the bottom line that really get an impact for you. And you do less of the perfectionism, less of the overthinking things, less of the um, spending hours deciding what colors you're going to do. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. That's not going to help your bottom line. So uh, I think that awareness of like, you can change it down the road, like, it will change down the road, that's going to happen. It's inevitable. So yeah, that makes a huge difference. Now, when we were talking before we hit record, you were sharing how Member Vault started as just something that you built for a one specific client for your online business management. So, you know, speaking of change and evolved, what are some things that you kind of experienced with as you turn this into a business and how did it change and how did you know what to keep and what to get rid of with the, you know, Member Vault? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we did, we created it for uh, one of my OBM clients um, because we were unhappy with the course tools that we were trying and I was griping about it to my husband who's a developer and he's like, you know, I can build something better than that, right? Uh, and so um, we ended up creating that for, for our customer and uh, it evolved as a, as a course tool. Um, but like I was telling you before, like her users were coming to us and saying like, how can I use this? I want to use this in my business. I really love using it. And so, um, you know, we had some like beta users that we were like, okay, we'll charge you like X price for this. Right. Like we hadn't really fully decided to make it a business at that point. Um, it was more of like a little kind of side hobby. And, uh, I didn't even really want to move forward with it as a business because I was like, there's already a ton of tools out there. It's a lot of work. I don't want another business. Um, you know, once you have the tool, that's just the first step. Now you have to actually promote it and, you know, customer service and like all of this, like, I don't know if I really want to do that. Um, and so it was my husband really that was pushing it forward. And we finally had so many people come to us that said that they loved using it. Um, that I'm like, okay. Like this is, this is a viable tool. Like people really like using it. Like let's, let's put some serious energy behind it. Um, and so it was through watching our users. We have unlimited, unlimited uploads. You can put anything that you want in there. Uh, and so we were watching our users. Um, they were starting to put 
a bunch of stuff other than courses, right? So we started out as a course tool, but they were like putting their opt-ins in there and they were putting their resource areas for their one-on-one -on -one clients and they were running challenges and putting like a video uh, series into Memberbot and we were like, wait a second, we're not really a course tool, we're like a content platform because you can put anything in there. Uh, so it was really, I think my biggest lesson is just always paying attention what your users are doing, what they want, um, you know, what's the stuff that's really helping them be successful and then just building off of that. Yeah. It's like it, you know, formed for you. You didn't even form it to do these certain things. No, no, yeah. it has really evolved for our users. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Now you did mention that a lot of the things you weren't actually wanting to do. So when was the point that you determined that those tasks that you don't like doing were worth it in order to pursue this business? So it's less that I don't like doing them. It's more, I think, because I like doing them, I know I have a very full, real awareness of how much time and energy it takes. And so it was right. like, I only want to do that if this is really a viable business that we're going to really put our energy behind. So I don't want to half-ass it, you know? Yeah. And how did you, you know, kind of handle those beta testers when you first started? Did you let them know that, like, this is just a test to see if it's actually going to be a business? Mm hmm. Yeah. So we said, here's the tool you you get to keep it. Um, they got lifetime licensing to it. Uh, and we were very, very upfront with all of our early adopters. Like, we're just testing this out. Like, we love that you love it. Uh, we're going to keep adding features and see where this goes. And so everyone was really excited to be at that like grassroots level. Uh, and of course, now most of them are still with us. And they're so happy because they got grandfathered in at like the, the very, very early adopter pricing. So um, it's been really cool. Yeah, well, I think this goes right along with what I was talking about with Maggie Gila and some other people about how, you know, in order to determine your niche or to determine what path you should be on, a lot of times it's all about taking action and actually trying things out. And, you know, do you feel like you could have gone back if you needed to and said, no, this isn't what we want to do. I'm going to stick with the online business manager business. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can always, you can always pivot. You can always change the direction. I think that all of us are always evolving. So, um, yeah, not being scared to take action. Like you said, I mean, I'm very, very much a big fan of the action taking because, uh, for example, I mean, like I said, our users are what have really like given us our forward progress. It's by getting on the phone with them, you know, emailing them, taking action on what they like and turning it into, you know, an evolving tool that has become pretty awesome. Yeah, I think feedback is so important. And a lot of times we're afraid of what people will say. And, you know, we're afraid of being shut down and having people, you know, they could have been a complete flop. No offense, like I know that you, it's an awesome program. Oh, no, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and any feature that we add could be a flop, right? Like yeah. I could be really excited about something. We're like, yay, yay, yay. And we put it out there and people are like, yeah, this sucks. Yeah. Uh, and you do, you have to get used to criticism. You have to have a thicker skin yeah. and not take it personally. And that's what ultimately will help it grow. Because mm -hmm. if you're listening to your users and they're all saying that this one, you know, service that your platform offers isn't working for them or they don't like it, then you can tweak it to something that is helpful and make it that much stronger of a program. And your clients will feel that you're listening and that they're a part of the business and it makes it more personal for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, they love that they feel very much like they're part of like a family. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a community based. Uh, they're excited. I think that's one of our biggest things is that we have amazing customer service and people feel like we're really listening and we, you know, they'll say they really want a feature and then like the next day that feature will be there. So people are really excited about that for sure. Yeah, I think in small business, it's so important to build those relationships, especially when you're just starting out at the ground level and on something that you could be very disconnected. It's a software they can sign up and just take it, you know, take it from there. But instead, you're listening and you're, you know, obviously interacting. I love that you mentioned how you jump on calls with people. And, you know, in this digital age where it's so easy to shoot emails and just send out a, you know, a survey to people, which I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of surveys. I, I'm not <laughs> going to criticize surveys, but jumping on a phone call can really allow you to talk things through a little better. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, like you said, it's good. You can have surveys, you can have a multitude of different ways that you're getting that feedback from people. We have, um, we have the collaborative, which is our power user group. So it's people that are really, really engaged. Uh, they get access to this group and that's a really great place for us to facilitate like, Hey, we're thinking about this feature. What do you guys think? Like, or we just launched this, like, where are you guys getting stuck? Which then reflects into our onboarding. So yeah, I mean, it's always about communication with your users or your clients for sure. Yeah. Now, how do you handle 
you know, chatting with your clients and your users and, you know, helping them and supporting them and also working on your business? Um, I would say that chatting with our clients, uh, we use intercom. So we have like that chat widget in our dashboard. Um, so we have that on our phones and so it's really easy to get the instant feedback from people when they're in there and they're struggling or they're really excited about something. Um, and that just reflects into like when someone messages us and says like, I love this thing. I just had this really awesome thing happen. It then gives us energy to work on the business. Uh, and really like it reflects into like, I'm like, I need to do a blog post about that or I need to do a Facebook live mm -hmm. about that because this is really exciting. Um, so it actually gives us a lot of energy into being motivated to work on the business, to do marketing, to do more features, to do all of that stuff. So it's actually really helpful. Yeah. Do you have somewhere that you store all of those comments that you can go back to later and, you know, just make sure that you're covering all the topics they're interested in? Yeah, so we, we use Trello. Um, so we have a Trello board. We have like a feature request lane. Uh, we have a testimonial lane, obviously. Mm -hmm. We have bug fix lanes. We have, um, you know, big win lanes where we do like screenshots from uh, really awesome things that people are doing. Um, so yeah, so we keep it all in there uh, for record keeping. Yeah, that's great. I think being organized and having a space space for it no matter what program you use i'm an evernote user so Love i document evernote. yeah i'll even i'll take screenshots of people's facebook conversations if it relates to my topic and so mm -hmm. i can go back and be able to use the language that they're using and be able to create yes. the things that i know that they're looking for so. yeah absolutely yeah it's all about knowing their language for sure yeah now as you see this growing if this were to take off and just explode um, what do you think you know how do you think you would handle that with your current lifestyle make sure that the business stays in line with you know the freedom that you want and the desired life that you want mm -hmm. so uh, we have an OBM on staff specifically for that reason so I mm -hmm. we have her kind of learning all of the member vault but you know ins and outs uh, she's been with us for a while she does a lot of the customer service stuff um, and we are moving in the direction of her handling a lot of stuff with her team she has a mm -hmm. VA team um, you know handing off all of the video editing that kind of stuff so we're really ready to to really make that leap as things grow uh, we have VIP clients and so we're looking at really systemizing that experience so that it's easy to be able to take more VIP clients without adding a lot more to our plates um, and then of course you know down the road we'll probably be handing some customer service off to an actual uh, customer service employee that we don't have yet so that would be something that we definitely will have to scale into yeah well it sounds like you're definitely thinking ahead which is awesome and so what are some other ways that you kind of plan for your business even if it's you know planning your marketing and planning your you know whatever else you want in your business your email funnels your social media yeah so uh i am absolutely totally addicted to email marketing so i'm always mm -hmm. looking at uh, ways to gamify content unlock content i don't know if you've really there's like a big trend towards uh, gamifying email marketing so that people actually will open your emails uh, and they'll consume your content. So this is something that I'm really looking at uh, revamping all of our funnels into so they become more of a dynamic funnel. So your more engaged users get a very different experience than the people that aren't really opening your emails. Um, so it's, I would say that I'm, I don't wanna say reactionary, but I'm always uh, almost on a daily basis, like looking at how I can improve different things, how I can, you know, capitalize on things that people are reacting to, whether it's doing a Facebook, Facebook live series, uh, doing some medium posts, you know, whatever. So it's, it's very much like in the moment. Okay. And what software or programs do you use? Like what do you use for your email marketing? Uh, Active Campaign is absolutely my email marketing of choice. Um, a lot of our users use ConvertKit, which now that they have the email automation feature, mm -hmm. like it's, Getting a little bit closer uh, to Active Campaign, but Active Campaign is by far uh, the tool that I recommend to everyone. Um, I love Canva Work. Uh, we love our Intercom, which is absolutely amazing if you're a software company or a company that wants to be able to have like the chat widget with a knowledge base uh, for your customers. Obviously, we use Member Vault for ourselves as well, um, and so those are those are some of our big um, tools. Sam Cards, love Sam Cards. Yeah, that's great. I think, you know, having those in place can, you know, you do have to pay the monthly membership fee, but it saves so much time and energy from those who would be, you know, a physical human working on those, you know, tasks that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, automation is great. Yeah.
Now, how do you kind of make room for creative thinking and, you know, planning out new ideas for member vaults within your business? Uh, I think that by, like I said, cutting my third business, it's really mm -hmm. opened some time. Like I can do nap time with my, with my little guy every day. I do one of his naps every day. Um, and that has been, I think, far and away, like the, my best thinking time. It's, some people say that they always have their best ideas in the shower. For mm -hmm. me, I have my best ideas while I'm putting my son down. It's probably because it's like quiet. It's very chill. I can't have my mm -hmm. phone on me. So I just have to like lay there and like let the ideas flow and that is where that's where I've had some of my like absolute best ideas yeah I find that I'm a nature person and so I have to get outside and you know whether that's sitting by the pool or going out in my backyard we've got a little nature preserve or going for a walk a lot of times allows me to just get that energy out and think and to, mm -hmm. to be able to just you know come up with new ideas and plan things out because your head can get spinning in a million different directions so if you're trying to plan and create while you're sitting at your computer and you've got social media notifications coming up and emails and you know client tasks that you know you need to be taken care of it can make it really hard to get those ideas out into the world yeah definitely i think uh when you're sitting at your computer that's like your that's your do it time that's your action yeah. time right you have to really step away uh and then when i'm feeling low energy i think the best thing for me has always been going outside like you said and listening to podcasts like business podcasts it always gets me fired up for sure yeah what are some of your favorite podcasts it's always evolving because there's so many to listen to. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't have any like current like that I listen to every single day, but yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of a podcast like jumper where I used <laughs> to have certain ones that I would just listen to the same one over and over. Profit Power Pursuit is one of my favorites. Tara Gentile. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. But now I found that I'm trying to be more intentional with my time. And so I only select you know, podcast episodes that are related to what I'm working on at the time. So right now I'm in launch mode. So listening to only things that are supporting my launch or, you know, hosting a summit, I had to listen to some podcasts, like I've never hosted a summit and I'm interviewing these people. How do I do a good interview? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's absolutely, that's like kind of the way I do it. I have a bunch of podcasts that I subscribe okay. to, and then I just scroll through and look at both the length of the podcast episode. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I have 20 minutes that I get to it and also the topic. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm the type too, I'll put it on double speed for the most part, or like one and a half <laughs> speed, so I can listen. And then sometimes if there's something I'm like, whoa, that was good, I need to like go back and slow it down <laughs> and listen to it on like normal speed. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, this has been so amazing. I love your story and your journey and just how it's evolved kind of on its own, but you're so intentional and looking ahead even eight years in advance. And so, if you could offer one piece of advice for how to take back your business, what would that be? I would say go with your gut. Yeah, really pay attention with how you're feeling. I think a lot of us actually know the decisions that we have to make, but we're second guessing ourselves or we're feeling like we should do something else. And um, it's really just trusting that you already sort of know what you need to do and it's, you're going to have to make the, the tough decisions. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. It, it definitely, like that's sometimes with building out classification, that's what I've had to come down to is, you know, you've got a million voices all telling you different things of what you should be doing. And it comes down to listening to your own instinct of what you know is best for you. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, Aaron, where can people find you online? So they can find us at membervault.co. Uh, that's our website. And then we're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and we would love to see you on the interwebs. Yeah. And Erin has so graciously given us a freebie that you can download. So it is a, um, a follow-up series of emails, right? So <laughs> that you can... Yeah, if you want to explain it, you do. Yeah, time. yeah. So like, I'll break it down. So um, I have always hated following up because I forget. Um, like, I'm, I'll be really good and I'll follow up with someone like twice and then they fall through the cracks. And uh, we stumbled on this follow up um, strategy of giving a gift. So you can get access to how to do the follow up gift and also our tracking Trello boards so that you don't have people fall through the cracks. And that's at membervault.co forward slash follow up. Awesome. Thank you for that free resource. That sounds amazing. And also, if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, make sure to do that because Erin has so graciously given a 52 emails to engage, uh, sell, and motivate. Sorry, I had to read that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, a swipe bundle. So oh, it's a whole series of emails so that you don't have to sit there and write all of those yourself. So make sure you enter the giveaway at takebackyourbiz.com where you can also find all of the other summit videos of our amazing influencers and hear about our free challenge to help you take back your business.
business. So Erin, thank you so much for joining us. This was really great. Thank you. Yep. All right. Bye.